This video is about queen cups. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, to 101, from 2 to 3, to 4 to 5, to 6, to 7, to 8, to 9, 30, from 1 to 2, to 3, to 4, to 5, to 3, 6, to 3, 7, to 8, to 9, 40, 41, for 2, for 3, for 4, for 5, for 6, for 7, for 8, for 9, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, I wiped out three more there, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 64 queen cups along the bottom bars of the second uh, second box. So there's no eggs in any of them. That uh, doesn't mean they'll turn all of those into queen cells, but it's definitely an indication that they're thinking about swarming. It's unusual that you'll see that many queen cells, but sometimes it occurs. This video goes with uh, the other video about my feral colony that had a uh, copious number of queen cups in it, over well over 80. And now I've made a split from that, and they've got plenty of honey. There's a really strong nectar flow on, lots of flowers, Russian olives, wild roses, and they're pulling all this brood out. There was open brood when I made the nuke out of it, and now they're uncapping capped over brood that's perfectly healthy when there's a good nectar flow on and pulling it out of the cells. And I can't find any queen cells in here. There was five days ago. They've chewed them all down. I don't know if a virgin has emerged and chewed them up, but I kind of don't think so. I'm not sure what's happening. There's a bit uh, strange behavior with this colony. There's definitely some different genetics. We'll keep monitoring this feral bee line and see what happens. Same thing with this other nuke I took out of the feral colony with queen cells. They still have a whole bunch of queen cups but there's no queen cells. There was at least a dozen of them in here and they've chewed them all down. So we'll come back in a week and if there's not a, uh, a queen in here in a week we'll know something crazy happened. Alright this video is about the crazy queens, crazy colony bees from Southern Utah who pulled out all the brood, consumed all the brood when I moved them. They had a whole bunch of queen cells and then they got rid of them all and then they started laying workers and then I put a queen cell in just to see if I could correct, correct them with a queen cell. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to find out right now. This is the frame with the queen cell. She should have emerged about a week ago. And it looks like she did. There's a hole chewed out at the end of it, so, so she emerged. Did they kill her after she emerged? Let's look through and see. Ah, that, uh, no, that's a drone. Oh, no, another drone. All right, I'm still seeing multiple eggs, so we still have laying workers. I just looked through the other nucleus, same scenario, I did find the queen. There's still eggs from laying workers. The queen's not laying yet, but she's in there. They accepted her. And I'm hoping they have also accepted the queen in this one. Still looking. Hang with me. These bees are a little bit nervous. Maybe it's just the day, maybe it's the bees, but as soon as I disturbed them, they all went and buried their heads in an open cell of honey and are filling up. Sometimes bees will do that more than others. There's a nectar flow on them, dripping honey. There she is right there. Okay. Isn't that a good deal? We've got the queens are, have been accepted. And uh, we still have laying workers in there, though. 
So go figure. These bees are a little bit different. They are they're a different variety. Hopefully, uh, which is what we wanted. That's what the Feral Bee Project's all about. Let's find some bees that have a little bit different characteristics. And hopefully some of those characteristics will be ones that allow the bees to survive better. Are these them? Don't know yet. This queen obviously isn't. This queen's a different queen. We've lost the feral feral genetics from this particular place. But we'll go do it again. I'll put some more mating nukes back on that same location and try again, see what happens. Alright, this is the follow-up from the Queen Cup Crazy Colony that had 80 something plus. 90 plus queen cups and then pulled out all the brood cannibalized all the brood uh, so we've got a queen in there now here she is here uh, okay now yes she's right there that queen's from different genetics though I put in a ripe queen cell from another colony and they won't let her they won't let her raise up a patch of brood. They keep pulling them out before they cap them over. However, there is one queen, or there is one cell that's emerging. That's a worker bee. It's coming out. Why are they rejecting all the others? And only very few new workers are they letting mature. Strange, strange things happening here. I'm not sure what's going on. We're going to uh, keep working on it, though. All right, this is another split from the Queen Cup crazy colony. We'll see if they're doing any better. They should have capped over and just now emerging brood. Nothing nope. much there. Nope, and see any eggs? Not here. No eggs on that front. There's the queen bee right there. Yep. So we know we got a good queen. They accepted the queen. There's eggs, there's multiples. Multiple eggs in the cells. That, that was that way before too. So there might be multiple eggs in the cell because the queen doesn't have enough attendance to, uh, to get her going. That could be the problem. Or there still could be laying workers in there which usually is not the case. A mature laying queen will suppress the reproduction of the workers. But there's uh, still some strange behavior going on here. Looks like a random, a random worker cell that's capped over here and there on this frame. There's more eggs on it. Is there larva that's maturing? Okay, we've got yeah. some larva that's maturing. So I'm assuming that there's a pupa underneath some of the capped over cells. Bruce, will you open one of those up with your knife and see? Looks like it. Looks like a healthy pupa underneath there. So they're letting a few of them mature, but still the same as the other one. They seem to be uh, ultra super hygienic. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a frame of brood capped over from another colony and I'm put it in here. And then we'll come back and see if they cannibalized it, if they let it mature and emerge or not. Be right back. I'm taking a really nice solid frame of brood out of a good strong colony. And I'm going to put it in the extra super OCD hygienic bees and see what they do with it. If they pull all this brood out of here, cannibalize it, uh, we'll, we'll know something. What will we know? Um, I don't know yet. Still working on it. Maybe they're Varroa suppression hygienic extreme bees. I don't know. Let's see, let's put it in the middle. 
We know they got a queen. We know that. And we'll give them a little bit of grass. Okay. Now, uh, we'll put a mark on this. All right. So we know which colony, uh, which frame is which. And then we come back in a few days uh, and see what they did. This is a follow-up video on the crazy queen cup colony. We're going to see if they kept the brood that I gave them or if they went and uncapped it and removed it like they did before. Okay, yeah. All right, it's it's the uh, one that's marked here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, it looks like it's emerging. Yeah. It's emerging rather than being chewed out of there, so that's good news. Okay. I guess. I don't know what it is. It's news. They didn't cannibalize the brood that I gave them. Maybe all of the bees that had that disposition were gone because it's been such a long time. Well, let's see. One more thing to look at. Okay. So there's a queen in there and she should have gone back and laid eggs in all those cells, which I think she did. I see uh, larva, day old larva and eggs in there. So seems to be queen right. We'll, uh, we'll go get some of those genetics from that same mating location in southern Utah again this fall and see how they behave next year. That's probably a conclusion to this crazy queen cup colony.